The final appearance of four days in which the monarchy can rarely have been cemented more strongly in the affections of the British people. No matter that the rain was threatening to make one last unwelcome appearance, the crowds more than a million strong were going to shout their support. Their monarch was going to express her thanks to a very grateful nation. And for this diamond weekend, she was wearing her grandmother's spectacular diamond brooch, two stones cut from the Cullinan diamond. Today did get the finale that had been missing on Sunday, though it was touch and go. The cloud just high enough for a fly pass from first to Dakota and two King Airs. Then a Lancaster bomber, Spitfires and a hurricane from the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. And then followed by the Red Arrows, trailing red, white and blue. In an address to the nation this evening, the Queen spoke of how the last four days have affected her. The events that I have attended to mark my Diamond Jubilee have been a humbling experience. It has touched me deeply to see so many thousands of families, neighbours and friends celebrating together in such a happy atmosphere. But Prince Philip and I want to take this opportunity to offer our special thanks and appreciation to all those who have had a hand in organising these Jubilee celebrations. The Fanfare Jubilate, composed for this day, had announced the royal arrival at St Paul's. Congregation 2,000 strong from charities and voluntary organisations, government and the law, the Commonwealth and overseas territories, all giving thanks for a life of extraordinary service. We are marking six decades of living proof that public service is possible and that it is a place where happiness can be found. May we be given the grace to rediscover this as we give thanks today for Her Majesty's 60 years of utterly demanding, yet deeply joyful service. The Diamond Choir of 41 specially auditioned and selected young singers sang for her a new anthem, Call of Wisdom. This will have been no duty for the Queen, but a highlight of this long Jubilee weekend. She has spoken often of the faith that has sustained her through her long reign. <laughs> Having given thanks, it was time to celebrate, starting with a lunch at Westminster Hall. Queen. From the 1,000-year-old splendour of Westminster Hall, the day was given over to the pomp and the pageantry that make British royal occasions unique and thrill any who watch them. The 1902 State Landau shared in the absence of Prince Philip with the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. The forecast rain holding off just long enough to allow the estimated 1.5 million people who were lining Whitehall, Horse Guards and the Mall to get a perfect view. The hooves of the Sovereign's escort of the Household Cavalry at times barely audible above the wave of cheering that swept over the carriage procession. These four days of Jubilee celebrations were coming to an end, but they were ending in terrific style. 
The hundreds of thousands who wanted to be outside the palace for the balcony appearance were moved calmly and patiently down the mall by a thin blue line of metropolitan police officers. From the guardsmen, normally so imperturbable as they guard Buckingham Palace, a feu de joie, a fire of joy. And then, bearskins in hand, the final tribute of a weekend, the like of which none of us will ever see again, and no one who was here is ever likely to forget. <laughs>